as part of your developmental journey towards professional cricket, you spent a, at least one summer and maybe two summers in Australia. Now, this is quite, did, yeah. quite a common thing for a lot of male cricketers to do is spend Northern Hemisphere winter down in either Australia or South Africa or New Zealand. But yeah. it's not something I've heard an awful lot of female cricketers do. And I'm quite fascinated how the opportunity came about for you. Who planted the seed in your mind? Or was it something you pursued on your own? And how did it came, come about? And how were you connected with Peron Cricket Club in Victoria? Yeah, God, that was um, five years ago now, which is kind of scary. I just remember finishing up my A-levels and thinking, I'm done with education. I am never going to uni. I'm done with studying. Um, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go for the winter. I'm going to play some cricket. And then I'm going to come back and assess what I'm going to do with my life. Um, and kind of sort of in a small women's cricket world in the UK, that was kind of what people did. You would go away for the winter, exactly like you said, the men do. So I emailed a bunch of clubs. Um, a lot of them didn't get back to me. I had no idea when, where I wanted to go. And one of my really good friends, Naomi Titani, the year before had been to Peran. Um, So I just sent her a message and said, hey, I've seen you went to Australia last year. What was it like? What's the club like? Have you got any contact details? So I emailed the club. They got back to me really quickly. And yeah, they said, look, yeah, come out. We'd love to have you. You know, I was 18 at the time. Didn't really know what I was going to get myself into. Um, just know that I wanted to get away, play some cricket and do a bit of traveling. Um, so yeah, I went out, uh, oh God, September 2016 uh, for the winter and just had the most incredible time. Um, and, you know, learned a lot as a cricketer, as a person as well, being away from home. Lived with Nobu Tani as well. Play, played the same club. Met some really cool people out there. Carl Sandry, who was a coach at the time. And like some Annabelle Sutherland as well, playing with her. As, I think she was 16 at the time when I met her. And obviously, yeah, she's an absolute superstar now. So, yeah, it was the most incredible time. And to be able to travel as well and, and have a bit of freedom as a kid was, um, yeah, everything I dreamed of. You mentioned quite a few names there. Naomi Datani, I know, was one of your teammates for the 100 this past summer, I believe, and uh, an established player in the, in the setup. One of the names you didn't mention, uh, you, you came across in Australia... Uh, you're, you're starting to grin for people who can't see the screen. Uh, I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but there's an article in the Herald Sun dated February 5th, two, <laughs> 2017. Oh, that was a good day. It was a good day. I would say so. Yes. Peran. How, how do you say it? Peran? Peran. Peran. You need to say it with an Aussie accent. It helps. Peran. Peran. There you go. Okay. Peran. Yes. Peran wins women's premier 2020 grand final against box hill and then the sub headline tara norris almost single-handedly won the women's premier cricket 2020 final for paran on, that's very generous on saturday well you're being you're being modest but the further down we go you took the wicket of meg lanning is that correct i did yeah Meg oh, Lanning. Sure well, you got you got the double sure landing. You got the landing double. I Meg did. And Anna Lanning. You got them both. It says Do here. I remember that. Lanning, who claimed her third Belinda Clark Award as Australia's best women's cricketer last month, was removed for two as Paran scored a comfortable seven wicket win. After being sent into bat, Tara Norris made the pivotal breakthrough. She also removed Meg's sister Anna, Rebecca Carter, claiming the first three wickets to lead Box Hill three for 28. Take me through that day. It was a hot day. It was absolutely roasting. It must have been 30 plus degrees. And obviously, being from England, I'm not used to that kind of heat. <laughs> yeah, it was a big T20 final. I don't think Karan had ever won a T20 comp for a while, maybe. And, you know, I was actually working a second job. Well, I was working quite a few jobs out there. So I think I'd been coaching at a school that morning. Maybe done like a 7 till 10 a.m. coaching shift. Scrammed some food. Got on the train to the game. I can't remember what the game was, actually. Um, but it was a hot day. And... Yeah, took an early wicket, took Meg Lang's wicket. Actually, wasn't an amazing ball, but yeah, caught short third. I didn't know what she was trying to do. So yeah, that was just the most ecstatic feeling ever and just being around the team. And then, I don't know why, I hadn't batted at three. I think I batted at three. I hadn't batted much throughout the whole comp. And for some reason, they said, you're going to bat three today. We want a left-hand, right-hand combo. So it must have been Naomi Tani was opening and they said, right, if the lefty gets out, you're in. If righty gets out, don't worry about it. So yeah, before I know it, I'm walking out to bat. I can't remember what we're chasing, but yeah, I remember batting with Emma Ingalls and then just sort of finishing the game off, really. And it was, yeah, lots of celebrations after. And I think as well, Aussie cricket, it can be 
pretty ruthless. You've really got to prove yourself to the teammates, especially in overseas. So being 18 and quite naive, I don't think I probably found myself in that team until that day. So I remember after that, I felt a little bit more, almost like I'd earned my place in the team and kind of respected in, in the group and at the club. So yeah, that game was a massive shift point and a massive confidence boost for me. Um, and a, definitely a day which I'll remember forever. I've still got the medal uh, in my room back home in England. I'm sure my, my dad's got the, the news article clip somewhere. Um, yeah, no, it was it was crazy. So you took that big haul and then you finished 30 not out with four boundaries. You had an all-around performance that day. In terms of confidence boost, like you said, but also the elevated expectations, whether that's placed on you by somebody else or you personally start to set bigger goals for yourself. When you come off of that, whether it's grade cricket, some other form of cricket, and you get somebody like Meg Laning out, like, like the article says, three-time Belinda Clark medal winner, what does that do for you mentally in terms of how you start approach cricket going forward? I think it's just that sense of belief, belief that I've done this before. Okay, she might be the best friend in the world, but I'm going to give this a good go. I'm going to trust myself. And, and yeah, for me, it was just a massive belief in my ability. Confidence is probably something which I've always struggled with from a cricket point of view. So moments like that, getting those wickets of key players in various tournaments, you just need to bank them and put them in a safe place because sometimes, you know, when you're going through those dark phases, you know, you need to remember those, those successful moments. And they go so quick, those moments. So for me, it's about enjoying, you know, those very rare moments and, and always sort of referring back to them whenever you need them.